As always, we've got a million things going at Graveyard Cars. We've got 100 cars out in the lot. We're a busy shop. We do have two cars that need to make it to SEMA. That's a little dramatic. Chris Jacobs' car, so we've got the drivetrain installed in it. Now there's a lot of plumbing, there's O2 sensors, the drive shaft, the fuel system, the electrical, the, the Mopar controller unit. There's still a lot of things that have to be done. Now it doesn't mean if they're not done we can't get to SEMA, we'll get to SEMA. But it'd be nice if the cars could move around and run and drive rather than just be pretty candy on the showroom floor. Equally, our Superbird. We still have to install the drivetrain and do all the things I just mentioned on the GTX, except times two because it's a supercharged Hellcat engine. We have lots to do. Those are our top priorities to be able to have these cars not only show up to the show, but be functional at the show in case somebody wants to do an article on them. Or, more importantly, Monday night I have what they call a red carpet event. This is where I'm supposed to drive the Superbird Hellcat up a ramp six feet in the air, flatten out. Then there's an MC. He's going to talk about the car, and I'm going to wave to everybody. It's one of those red carpet moments. It would be really nice to have let's say the car run and drive up the ramp, for one, and then be able to stop so I don't roll down the other side and kill somebody. So it, it really does need to be two cars that are functional, and so our back's up against the wall right this second. So right now the ghouls are gonna start working on doing the plumbing, some of the plumbing on Chris Jacobs' car, all right? And our newly adopted ghoul, Mr. Joe Dirte, with the hair down here. You know he thinks he's Joe Dirt, right? I mean, I've told you that before. He, he runs around, he tries to change his last name, put an E on the end, church it up. Not Joe Dirt 2, that sucked. Joe Dirt the original. So with Chris's car, he's got a deal worked out with Magnaflow. They're gonna actually put a complete system once he gets the car done and back and see him is over with. For right now, we just made some cuts in his original exhaust, reflanged and welded some couplers on so they'd marry to the TTI headers, kind of just to get it by. I'm sure it'll sound great, because the car probably sounded great before, but uh, eventually I think he's gonna change that out to a Magnaflow system. The really cool thing about these headers are they, they bolt right, for one, bolt right to the 392 Hemi. They're designed to fit our Mopar, our B body, and they also have the ports already pre-welded in them for the O2 sensors, for the upstream O2 sensors. Uh, some applications need an upstream and a downstream. In the case of our 392 with the simplified wiring harness, we only need the two upstream O2 sensors, so this just kills uh, two birds with one stone. Put the headers on there, really cool, they sound nice, and they already have the O2 ports in them. Yeah, Mark's used to doing a lot of restoration stuff, as, as everyone knows. He is the resto go-to guy. And uh, when you get outside of his comfort zone a little bit on some of these types of projects, you can see where he has a new level of stress. I think it's on those particular days he might kind of want to get out of here a little early. Hey, look, I don't mind stepping back a bit when it comes to this custom stuff. It, it's fun, and it's, and it's got a lot of eyeball to it but my brain just operates on a completely different set of gears, metaphorically speaking, than aftermarket uh, add-on stuff that you can order out of a book. So I'm gonna move back, let Ron take over, because this is his cup of tea. Oh, Joe Dirt, he just loves this aftermarket stuff. Can't get enough of it. If he could have a Mopar without one OEM part on it, he would be thrilled to death. Butcher. So this particular uh, controller can use the O2 sensors, and it does use the O2 sensors. These are, I believe, called the upstream ones. And so there are leads that go into it, just like it would at the factory. It's just that TTI on their headers built an actual port real close to the same geometric location that the factory would have. So that's another bit of wiring. But because they're headers and not the manifolds, we have to extend both of those leads down to it and with the same gauge of wire, not to change the millivolts or whatever fancy schmancy talk they like to use. Make sure everything works and talks to the computer like it's supposed to. So right now, we're out of the woods on the 68 GTX, Jacob's car, other than maybe just checking some fluid levels and things like that. That thing's done. That means the whole team, all the ghouls and Dirte, are gonna move over to the Superbird and start working on installing the engine, the transmission, and that.